let's look at something that hits a little closer to home in a good way, is LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a very similar exponential growth in, the, in, in, their, in, their, in their trajectory. If you look at 2011 to 2021, they went from 100 million to just under 800. So we'll round it to eight. That's three doubles. 100 million to two, two to four, four to eight. Three doubles in 10 years. CEO of LinkedIn is on record of saying they want to get to 3.2 billion or 3 billion people. That's two more doubles. Eight to one six, one six to three two. And here's the amazing thing. Grab your, grab your phone. I don't want to lose you if you grab your phone. So you promise you're not going to go down a, go down a rabbit trail? So grab your phone. Just hold it with both hands. You have access to 800 million people. <laughs> like by pushing an app. If we were to go back 50 years to our ancestors in selling and said one day there will be this device <laughs> that has 800 million prospects, or well, suspects at least, 800 million in the phone, let's see, 50 years ago, 72. Yes, yeah, 72, they would have said, what are you smoking, right? And can I have some, probably. Um, this is an amazing time. They would have probably said, there is no way to fail. How can you fail with 800 million people in your hand? It's truly astounding. And then we look at Zoom, okay? so. Zoom, pretty well documented, 50x in the users in the first year. But what Zoom really did, and I want us to think about technology today as I weave this a bit more into what we can be doing now, is that Zoom, and I'm gonna use Zoom generically, whether you use Teams or WebEx or GoToMeeting, it helps us multiply and simplify. I remember at the end of 2020, I had a client call me, and he said this. He said, it's, it was an amazing day yesterday. He said, I had four meetings in three time zones on two continents in one day. And he said, like, what is happening right now? We in this room have been, I've been able to now multiply ourselves in a way we never could before. And when Mike was talking about go world class, we're also going to be going worldwide. Those of you with a 10-year career track, I can guarantee you you're going to be doing international sales, and you might today be doing local and regional sales. Local's going to regional, regional's going to national, national's going to global. People are just taking a step or two up from where they're at in their career track. We'll go Elon Musk, we'll go, Elon, we'll go uh, intergalactic when we're on Mars, right? So, but it's expanding. And so we've multiplied ourselves, but we've also simplified. If I was going to have a sales meeting in Boston, I mean, I live, live in Chicago. Here's the kinds of things I have to do to get the meeting to start in Boston. I got to pack, and you know, I'm a, I got, I'm a DC on disk, and that's C for my packing list. You don't want to see my packing list. That's another slide, right? I got 25 things on there. And I didn't use it yesterday, and I forgot something, actually. Um, so. So think of this. I got to pack. I got to book the ticket. I got to get to the airport. I got to go through security. I got to get to the hotel. All this, all this complexity. If I'm running a virtual meeting, it's three clicks. If I want to get home from that meeting, I got to reverse the order of the previous slide. If I want to get home from the meeting on virtual, it's two clicks. And if you look at the research on what B2B buyers are saying is their preference for dealing with potential suppliers, it's about a third, a third, a third. This is November 21, McKinsey's research. You've got about a third of the people surveyed say, yeah, we want traditional. We want to do the traditional interaction. A third are saying we want remote. And a third are saying we want on demand. Right? We want it to be instant. We don't want to deal with a salesperson. So there's a lot of debate, probably in the hallways, like are we, when are we going back to normal, whatever that means, right? And, and when are we going to get back to face-to-face? -to -face? And there's nothing that beats face-to-face -face meetings. And I would say, yeah, there's a lot of things about face-to-face -face that are good, but there's a lot of things about it that suck. <laughs> right? And there's some parts to virtual that are way better 
than they are face to face. Getting multiple decision makers together from multiple locations is way easier in a virtual environment and highly effective. I know many in this room, our Sandler office included, have sold multiple, multiple millions of dollars of stuff to people we've never shaken their hands. We have trust, we have credibility, we have the connection. We didn't need to be in the room. Now, sometimes when I talk about this stuff, I come across as like, we're never getting in a room. There's a value to a room. But I hear this, I hear this or statement. Well, is it better to be good in a room, face-to-face, -face, selling, shaking hands, or is virtual? And I'm like, you, you gotta change the or to an and. You gotta be good in face-to-face -face and virtual. And you better be equally good at both.